Cowhands on a hoorah weren't the only troublemakers in Dodge City when Wyatt Earp was marshal. There were tough buffalo hunters who went on sprees in Dodge. And there were the railroad construction gangs of the Santa Fe who tried to make good their boast that Dodge was hell on wheels. In 1876, these two groups of hoodlums fought each other for possession of the dance hall run by Dora Hand, the queen of Dodge City's nightlife. Dora Hand, a beautiful and mysterious young woman who was a legend in her own lifetime. Men shot or maimed one another in fights over Dora and the girls of her dance hall. Take it easy. Now, what's all this about? It was just an argument, Marshal. There's no need to arrest them. They'll behave. Take them both to jail, Hal. Come on. Now look, Miss Doyle, this is the third fight you've had in her since noon. Sam, drinks on the house. Marshal. I would have broken it up. The men listened to me. Mr. Doyle, that buffalo hunter would have cut him to ribbons. Well, the railroad man started it. Look, you've got a rough mixture here. Buffalo hunters and railroad men. You're going to have to make up your mind to bar one crowd or the other. Well, it's not easy, Marshal. What about the cowhands and the soldiers? No, what I need are bigger and braver barkeeps. They'll stop all the rough stuff. Mr. Doyle, that isn't going to work either. Why, there have always been fights on this side of the line. When men drink and argue about women, they're bound to be fights. Not with knives and guns in it for a fight. What's this leading to, Marshal? You plan to close me. I sure don't want to, Miss Doyle, but... Keep out of this. I only want to make a suggestion to Marshal Earp. I'm just saying your report that the hoorah was at my place. That way she won't get mentioned in the papers. No, keep out of it. Mr. Kelly is in one of his gallant moods this evening. I handle my own beats, Kelly. You hit one of them on the head with a whiskey bottle. Is that ladylike? I told you you could never make a lady out of me. What'd you do to Jim? Are you a hypnotist or something? No, man. Herp ain't any friend of mine. Don't try to string me. Herp's got you acting respectable. Councilman Kelly, they call him the law and order man. Well, this is between us. You can say I'm a public nuisance and close me, I guess. Oh, no, no. Oh, shut up. Well, what's the verdict, Marshal? Well, Miss Dora, I, uh, I could sign an extra deputy here for a few days. Yeah, good idea. Oh, it's not a good idea at all. The Buffalo men will say you're siding in with the Santa Fe crowd, and the Santa Fe crowd will tell Major Paxton that you're favoring the Buffalo men. Well, what do you suggest? Well, I suggest... Why don't you let me talk to all the men? If they know that you're threatening to close me, they'll stop all the rough stuff. All right, ma'am, you're entitled to that chance. Good evening. Thank you, Marshal. Now, Dora, Oh, I'm... shut up, Kelly. Herp, wait for me. I want to talk to him. I thought you wanted to talk to me. No, I do. But not as a friend, mind you. All right. Don't get any wrong ideas about Miss Dora and me. She considers herself too good to marry a saloon keeper. By George, she's right. Yes, sir. You don't know Miss Dora. All you see is a dance hall owner and jump to conclusions. Well, I've jumped a lot of times, Mr. Kelly, but never to a conclusion. You might as well know the truth fair and square. I'm on Miss Dora's side. You in love with her? That's none of your business. Well, we hired you to keep law and order in this town, not to go sticking your nose into personal matters. All right, Mr. Kelly, I'll have to tell you the truth, fair and square. What truth? Well, I can't keep Sunday school order in this part of town. I'd be a fool to even try, but I do draw the line at knifing and shooting. Well, if Miss Dora can't control her customers, she's just going to have to close. Close her? Over my dead body. She'll still have to close. 
Earp, I had you right in the first place. You're nothing but a stupid, sanctimonious John Law. Now, let me tell you... Hold it, Kelly. Don't get tough with the marshal. Let Major Paxson handle him. Uh, who's Major Paxson? He's boss of construction for the Santa Fe, that's who. A fine man, Paxton. I'll stand you all around to drinks on it. You drink to the railroad, Mr. Earp? I'm sorry, I, uh, I don't drink. You can also tell Major Paxton I don't handle easy either. A double round of drinks. Free. All right. All right, we'll have a nice peaceable shindig. Yeah. Here's to Miss Dora. The Daisy Bell of Kansas. Yeah. To Miss Dora. Yeah. Yeah, to Miss Dora. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't want any more dirty buffalo hunters causing trouble. We're going over to her place and we're going to throw them out. It will be for railroad men only. Oh, oh no, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do you see that, Kelly? It's a lantern. We're going to hang it on the door. And that will mean that the door's place is for railroad men only. Uh, <laughs> Drinking to that, Kelly? Well, sure. We'll all drink to that. Uh, and on the house. On the house. Uh, on the house. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, this is Santa Fe night in Jim Kelly's. Any more railroad men in the house? Well, two more. Step right up here. Up here, I'm buying you a drink. Belly up. Belly up. Better get over to the Alhambra right away. There's been a crime committed. Kelly's? What is it, a barroom brawl? Worse than that. All right, put this one in the back room, too. Easy. Nice and gentle now. I don't want a bruise or a mark on him. Okay. All right. What happened, Mr. Kelly? Uh, bad liquor. They got it at Chalk Beeson's place across the street. What he uses in his whiskey, I'll never know. Put him down, Mr. Kelly. Well, it's just some bad liquor. Never mind. Holy smoke. Chloral hydrate. Anybody else besides these three men get Mickey Fins? Marshal, I swear, it wasn't I none. thought you were smarter than this. I had to do it. Why? They were going over to Miss Dora's to pick a fight with the buffalo hunters. Did you know that knockout drops can kill a man? It's poisonous? Ah. They're railroad men. You couldn't kill a railroad man with a Mickey Finn. Chloral hydrate is a deadly poison. I had to charge you with attempted murder. Charge me? You know, I thought the old Jim Kelly was dead. That you'd put an end to all this hoodlum stuff. Come on, lock me up. Don't you even stop to think? Rogan and Humpy put on a dance hall fight. Now you spread that route to all the buffalo hunters and all the railroad men. Well, I'd done it for her. Dance hall girl in a pretty face. Now you stop right there. She's a minister and angel, that's what she is. She's what? You go over to Reverend Hawkett's church in the morning and... No, never mind. Come on, lock me up. Never mind. We'll do that later. I'm gonna send Doc McCarty over here to take care of these men. You pay the doc and you just better hope they all wake up by tomorrow morning. And I'm no prude, Marshal. I expect my men to get drunk and chase dance hall girls. But I can't let it interfere with their work for the railroad. We're pushing iron. Two to four miles a track a day. Yes, sir. There's a pretty kettle of fish. Grogan, my top boss in the spike crew, laid up with a fractured skull. Seven terriers groggy from drugged liquor. Do you think the railroad's going to stand for this? Well, your men kind of asked for trouble, Major Paxson. Are you defending this door of hand? Am I to infer... Uh, no, sir. I'm not taking sides with Miss Dora or Mr. Kelly. I think we may be doing them both an injustice. Injustice? Great Scott, this hand woman has given me more trouble than all the other dance hall operators combined. I didn't come here to argue. I demand that you close this woman's place. Run her out of Dodge. Well, if I decide that's the way to handle it, I'll do it. How long do you think it'll take you to make up your mind? Not long, Major. I'll give you until tomorrow. After that, the railroad will take it to the town council. Well, tomorrow will be time enough. Good. 
There's just one little thing that bothers me. Yeah? The blanket camps outside of town are full of buffalo men. You got a big crew driving track. I think I can calm down the buffalo men. I used to be a hide hunter myself, but what about your crew? They'll be busy in the railroad. Yeah. We'll see that they stay that way, otherwise we may have a little fight on our hands. You going out to those buffalo camps now? Later. Got to go to church first. Be kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant scene. One step enough. For me. Very good, Miss Han. Now then, we'll try the recessional hymn. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I promised Reverend Halker to take up a collection for him. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. Another choir practice Saturday? Yes, I'll be here. Good day to you all. Good day. Good day. We'll go right to the recessional hymn. Page 119. Well, say it. Say what? That I'm on the wrong side of town, that I shouldn't dare to enter a church. Well, I couldn't very well say that, Miss Doyle. After all, they let me in church, too. Uh, Mr. Kelly got mad and told me I should talk to the Reverend Honkett about you. Uh, Kelly? He uh, also called you a ministering angel. Blarney. Sure, I kicked in some money to help build the church, but so did every place else in town. The Reverend Hall could ask me to join the choir because I sing a little bit better than the rest. Well, you have a very nice voice. This has nothing to do with whether you're going to close my dance hall or not. Are you? Did you talk to the men? Yes, I talked to them. They all promised they'd stop all the rough stuff. But to be honest with you, Mr. Earp, I don't believe it. Well, that's bad news. Not the people who get hurt. Including you. You don't have to worry about me. I'll take care of myself. I like you, Miss Doyle. And you like Jim Kelly. It's foolish of you, Mr. Earp. Liking us is going to get you into lots of trouble. So much trouble, you have to leave Dodge. Well, I don't need anybody's help to get me into trouble. Here it comes. Excuse me. What? The whole section gang's gone down to that blanket camp. They said they're going to run those buffalo hunters right out of Kansas. Guess I better saddle up. Excuse me, ma'am. Watch yourself, Marshal. They're a pretty tough lot. Yeah, I guess I am. Another one of your gang just burned out a buffalo camp a mile down the road. But we're in plenty of time to make you pay for the damages, and I want your hands to come up, and I want them to come up empty. Put them up, way up. All right, Mr. Frome, you claim there was about $750 worth of damage, huh? They burn any uh, rifles? Yeah, two sharps and a Winchester. It's about $150 or more. I'll take care of this. You better take care of it. My whole ballast crew pulled off of the job. We're a mile and a half behind schedule. Don't lecture me. What was that? I don't want any railroad big talk. 
The men were caught dead to rights. They raided and burned a hide hunter's camp, and the damage is nine hundred dollars. The railroad won't pay a cent. And they stay in jail. You had no right to arrest them. You're a town marshal. I'm also a United States deputy marshal. Now, if I were you, I'd get that money and get it fast. And I'll try and talk the buffalo hunters out of making their own raid. Are you threatening the railroad? I don't waste my time, Major. Now, if you don't have that money in two hours, I won't even try and stop. Now, who do you think you're fooling with? Those buffalo hunters are tougher man for man than any cow hens you ever heard of. What do you think they'll do? Probably chase your crews off the rack. They're up about five miles of track. That'd be my guess. It's all your fault. Oh? I asked you to run that woman out of town. That fancy bell door I had. She had nothing to do with it. Well, you're wasting your time, Major. All right. I'll get the money. But it's blackmail. You want to repeat that? No, I, I guess not. Sorry. Marshal, a barkeep brought a message from Miss Dora. He wants to see you right away. He says it's very important. Yeah, all right. And don't try to soft soap me. You got me into this mess, you and your Mickey Finn. I... And don't say that you did it to keep the fighting out of my place. You did it for Earp. Earp? I don't even like him. Oh, yes, you do. And he likes you. He told me so. Yeah? Since when did you and Earp get so friendly? Don't change the subject. The subject is that those hide hunters, you know what they're aiming to do to the railroad man. Yeah, I ain't admitting that. You better admit now, it. Dora. Now, Earth Dora. Now, coming here. I sent for him, and you better tell him the truth, because I'm tired of your hoodlum shenanigans. I'm a hoodlum. Just yes. look who's talking. Howdy, folks. <clears throat> Howdy, Mr. Earp. Uh, Miss Dora was showing me the statue. <clears throat> Just feel the weight of it. It's, uh... Quite handsome. All right, Kelly. Tell Mr. Earp. Tell him what? The buffalo hunters are aiming to get even with the railroad crew for wrecking their camp. Jim knows all about it. Well, I'm keeping you out of this. There's no call for you to get in the middle between them buffalo hunters and the railroad. You see, he wants to be your friend, but he's such a hoodlum, he doesn't know how. All right, I'm a hoodlum, and you're a lady. It's an odd term. What's an odd term? Um, well, what I mean, Mr. Kelly, is that you can't keep a peace officer out of trouble. That's what he gets paid for. If he knows the right cards, he's got a better chance. Uh, he'd have no chance at all. Well, the Major Paxson offered to pay the damages. Won't that calm the boys down? No. It's too late for damages. All right. Well, who's leading him and where can I find him? At your place? Tell him, Jim. Or I'll never even think about marrying you. Dora! Well, Mr. Earp, we were going to give up this sort of life. Together, both of us. But every time the chips are down, it's that old hoodlum, Kelly. Well, I'm quitting the church. I'm never going to go inside there again. No, Dora, no. I'll tell. Oh, the buffalo hunters left for the end of the track about an hour ago. With guns? They aim to bushwhack the Santa Fe, huh? No, plain stand-up fight. Now, don't go out there. It'd be like riding between the Federals and the Johnny Rebs. He's right, Mr. Earp. We thought it was just going to be a sneak raid. Well, if Major Paxson offered to pay the damages, those fellas start shooting, they'll wind up in jail. I'll see you all later. Well, you told them, Kelly. I hope you're satisfied. I know what I'm going to do.
told you. There's no way between them or behind them. I've got the money. What do they want? Give me the money, Major. Use your head. Don't try to go between them. They'll cut you down. Maybe not. Miss Dora. No, I'm not, but it's a small wonder. You idiots out here shooting at each other in a darn fool row. Put down your guns, all of you, or you'll never get a welcome again from me or my girls, and I mean it. Look, the railroad paid your damages, $900. It ain't enough, Wyatt. Well, that's all you're gonna get. Now, if you men hang around here with guns, the railroad's gonna start the soldiers after you. You buffalo hunters haven't changed a bit from the days I was a hide hunter. You're all still stubborn and cantankerous. Well, that settles it. Unless you behave yourselves, no more buffalo men welcome in my dance hall. Oh, we take the deal, Miss Dora, and we behave, don't we, boys? Yeah, yeah. we agree to that, don't we, folks? Yeah, we agree. Yeah. No more fighting, Miss Dora. Now, you uh, can take this to the city council. That's your privilege. What Miss Dora Hand did this afternoon more than makes up for any trouble that was caused at her place. Now, I'll argue against closing her. Jim Kelly controls the majority vote in the council. Well, I guess you're right. No hard feelings? No, sir. Yes, sir. Quite a woman, isn't she? <laughs> Can I tell her that? It's coming from you. Great Scott, no. I'm a happily married man. Oh, howdy. Did you have your talk with Reverend Hawkins? He wants me to stay on in the choir. The women are raising such men. I've caused enough trouble already. A foolish notion. Me in a church. Now, wait a minute. What is the church for except for good people and sinners? I'm going back in there and tell them what it is. Whoa, Marshal. Love thy neighbor. Be good to them that hate you, remember? Don't smile. You don't feel like smiling? No, I don't. You were about to say... I was about to say that... in this town of women, you're a great lady. Thank you. Hello, Albright. Well, Mr. Allison, have you thought it over? Sure. I'll kill him for you. Good. I want to keep Dodge a wide open town. If this herb isn't taken care of, he'll ruin business. If the man does me a favor this big, well, I you get out of here. I ain't killing wired herb for money. I got other reasons. My own reasons. <laughs> Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, starring Hugh O'Brien. Clay Allison was probably the most dangerous of all the killers who challenged Wyatt's authority as Marshal of Dodge City in 1876. Modern doctors would diagnose Allison as an alcoholic psychopath, but to the men of the western frontier, his character was baffling. Only a rough and ready psychologist like Wyatt Earp stood any chance in personal conflict with Allison. And for Marshall Earp, there was the deadly risk of guessing wrong. 
Clay Allison's on his way into town. He's coming to gun Marshal Earp. You go warn Miss Dora. I'll find her. Wyatt. It's a private, Hal. Got to excuse us. Sure, Mr. Kelly. Well, you look all out of breath. We may both be out of breath. Permanent. What are you looking for that to happen? Remember my telling you I suspected Pete Albright of setting a price on your head? Well, I was right. He hired Clay Allison. Clay Allison. You sure? Yep. Mr. Allison in town? Not yet, but maybe five or ten minutes. Hmm. Now, don't try any smart Alex stuff with Allison. Just go down to Front Street and shoot him off his horse. Uh, Clay will know, I warned you. It's my skin I'm thinking of. You see, you let a good impulse overpower you again. Impulse nothing. Everybody's got the fool idea I'm a friend of yours. And they'll tell Clay Allison that. Well, what are you going to do? Well, how, how well do you know Mr. Allison? Too well. I got drunk with him a couple of times when I was in the Army. It's a miracle he didn't blow my head off. Why didn't he? I was on furlough and I didn't pack a gun. And Allison didn't reach a killing edge. When he drinks, he's got to get a real edge on before he kills. Well, now get started for Front Street, unless you're scared. Sit down, Mr. Kelly. What? Sit down? Well, man, you got no time to sit down. Just sit down, Mr. Kelly, and tell me about Mr. Allison. Now, if he's going to come gunning for me, I better know a little bit about him. Maybe your life will depend on it. Hey, mister. Yeah? You better step inside. There's word that Clay Allison's on his way here. That's so? Yeah. Jim Kelly's place, huh? Yeah, but he ain't here. He went to warn Marshal Earp about Allison. I did. I reckon I'll step out of the sun while I wait. Yeah, you do that, mister. The guns, mister. It's Tom Lord to check him on that rack yonder. All right. Give me some whiskey. All right, sir. Oh, and I might add I'm an old friend of Kelly's. Oh, an old friend of Kelly's, huh? Well, that makes a difference. <laughs> Must have been before Kelly come to Dodge. That's right. Jim was in the Army. Oh, in the Army? That smells like pretty fair whiskey. It's out of Mr. Kelly's own bottle, mister. I got standing orders. Any friend of his is a friend of... Did I miss hearing your name? Jim knows me. Oh. Now, come on, are you just stalling? One more question, Mr. Kelly. What does Mr. Allison worry about? Well, our drinkers usually worry about something. Does he ever mention the uh, men that he's killed or talk about the fight or try and defend the killing? Allison? What silly talk. Why should he bother his head about it? No, the only thing I ever heard him worry about was these cartridges. Cartridges? He don't use factory loads. Does all his own loading, just to make sure he don't have a misfire. Well, that's enough, Jabber. You're scared of Allison. Yes, I am. In solemn truth? You're gonna hunt your hole? I don't understand you, Wyatt. Look, I'm trying to understand the reasoning of this man, Allison. He's afraid, so he drinks to kill his fear. The drink gives him courage to do the killing. So he winds up being hostile towards everybody. I can begin to see what makes him tick. I just hope I can handle him. Quiet. Clay Allison's in town. Where? Mr. Kelly's saloon. I knew it. You'll think I'm your friend and shoot me down. Marshal Earp. Clay Allison wants to see you at the Alhambra saloon. You tell him I'll be down in a half hour or so. I haven't had my dinner yet. Clay ain't gonna like being kept waiting. In a half hour, tell him. I thought you were gonna run. Wish there was something I could do to help you. 
Oh, there is. You can encourage Mr. Allison to get drunk in a hurry. You want him to reach a killing edge real quick? Mm -hmm. You tell him I said that, will you? Never doubt it. I'll tell him. And the sooner he gets rid of you, the better I'll feel. Well, well. Howdy, Clay. Haven't seen you in ages. Mm, howdy, Jim. Hey, you always did have decent manners. Well, the man I like, sure. Hold that. I'll join you. Soapy. Yes, sir. This is right fine whiskey, Jim. Is this my bottle? Yes, sir. Then you got the best. Well, Clay, here's the old times. Old times. Yeah, you're real polite, Jim. Tell me, why don't you teach Wyatt Earp some manners? How's that? Well, I sent him word I wanted to see him, talk to him. He sent back a message that I'd have to wait until he ate dinner. That's kind of rude, I'd say. Ah, forget it and drink up. No. Where does Earp generally have dinner, Jim? One place or another? I'll find him. Clay, what's your complaint against her? No complaint, Jim. I just want to find out if he's as brave as his friend's bright. I'll see you after a while. Sure, Clay. Soapy? Yes, sir? How many did he have? Two. Just two? How would he go against Derp Cold Sober? Time will tell. You're supposed to check those guns. That's Marshal Earp over there. Uh -huh. All right. So that's Wyatt Earp, huh? The great Wyatt Earp. I've been wanting to talk to him. Mr. Earp, my name's Allison, Clay Allison. Oh, glad to know you, Mr. Allison. Get my message? Yeah. I told Jim Kelly you didn't have decent manners. Then maybe I'm being rude, disturbing a man at his vittles, huh? No, you're not disturbing me. Sit down. Thanks. <clears throat> you, uh, want to talk to me about something? Yeah. There's been a lot of mean gossip about me. You may hear it. They say I take money for gunning a man. Oh, I've uh, heard stories like that. Well, they ain't true. Any fights I ever been in, money had nothing to do with them. I believe that. Really? Mm-hmm. Hey, what make are these? No make. I load my own. You do? It's a mighty fine job. You set the primer absolutely flush, huh? You know, I had to stop hand loading because I used to set a bumpy primer. The thing would hang up in the cylinder. You must be clumsy with tools. <laughs> All thumbs. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of forgetful, too. Once I, uh, I double loaded a shell and almost broke my wrist when the gun went off. <laughs> well, I never forget. My memory's perfect. I'd rather trust it than some factory loader. Well, if a man's got a perfect memory, and if he doesn't drink, why, it's smart to use hand loads. What's Stricken got to do with it? Well, they say it's uh, kind of rough on the brain. It's kept up too long. I heard all that doctor talk. Injures a man's recollection, they say. But I never hand load when I drink, and I've never had a shell misfire on me. Hmm? Well, you're mighty lucky, Mr. Allison. Hope you never do. Are you a betting man? Well, I've been known to sometimes. Got about a hundred cartridges on me. I'll let you load my guns, picking shells out of the hundred. And I'll bet you 20 to one they all fire. I'll make it 30 to one. You game to bet? Yeah, all right. 
Why don't you strap on your guns? We'll go out back to the livery stable. Good. Oh, now, don't you worry, Miss Jean. We'll be careful. Miss Jean's kind of uh, afraid of guns. Oh? There you are, Mr. Allison. All fresh loads. Thank you, Mr. Earth. 30 to 1, you don't have a misfire, huh? That's right. Why don't you just cut down on those tin cans over there? My guns never miss fire. Pay me. Well, that's real fine shooting, Mr. Allison. One dollar. Thank you. Come on over to Jim Kelly's. I'll buy you a drink. Well, I appreciate the offer, but uh, I don't drink. I'll see you around, though. Sure. Waiting to talk to you, in private. I uh, heard a couple of shots. I thought maybe you not did. yet, Albright. In my own time. I got the men I promised to back you. Hmm. With? They're lounging around over my store. I also got the money. Didn't you hear what I said the other day? Don't get sore. I thought maybe you changed your mind. No. I just finished denying to Earth that dirty gossip. All right, all right. It ain't all right. Started that talk about paying me. No, Clay, no! No! Two misfires. Forgot to reload my guns. Get on your feet. That's a, just a joke, huh, Clay? <laughs> yeah, sure, just a joke. It's the first time I ever forgot to reload after firing my guns. Earp did it. Him and his jabber about my memory talked me into forgetting. It's another reason to kill him. A John Law acting smart aleck with me. Well, uh, reload it and go get him. No. no I'll have me one drink first. You're almost out of liquor. Never mind. Just sit down. I want you to know that I don't like your choice of new friends. And I mean Wyatt Earp. He's no friend of mine. You are a liar, Kelly. You warned him I was coming to town. You've been trying to make me drunk. You are drunk, and don't call me a liar. Keep your fist to yourself and sit down. Well, that's better. Did you see that draw? Now look at his gun barrel. Not a quiver. As steady on your belly, Kelly. Not like that. Steady on your belly, Kelly. It all be a song. You're not fuzzy drunk yet. You're just mean drunk. That's right. My cartridges are all fired. I proved that to Earp. <laughs> there, you see? The gun went off, didn't it? I got you a man right where I wanted to get him. I feel fast but steady. You see any chance for Earp? Not much. Nope. Honest Jim Kelly, you made the right answer. 
<laughs> you know I like you, Kelly. That's why you ain't dead. But I don't like Herb. He thinks he's too brave. Quiet, my friend. Where have you been? You said I'd see you around. Who fired that shot in the... Oh, the bar keeps started for a gun. I didn't hurt him much. I just creased his hand. Ask Jim Kelly. I will. Uh, I'll be all right in a second, why? It's just liquor that makes me dizzy. I, I took too much, I reckon. Oh, why? You know, I, I don't feel very good, why? I, I think I'll go into the alley. Yeah, you do that, Mr. Allison. Where's Allison? Went around in the alley to drink himself some more courage. Well, take this and cut him in two. No. Mr. Allison's only got a couple of six shooters. Well, go after him. He winged Sophie and threatened to kill me. Well, what are you stalling for now? I don't want to have to kill him, Mr. Kelly. Well, why not? Will you just take it easy? Easy, he says. Clay Allison at the killing edge and he takes it easy. Well, now you can't hide in here. The whole town's watching you and Clay. Yeah, and they're all just blind stupid like you are. Oh, they are, are they? Look, I had the drop on Mr. Allison out there. I could have buffaloed him over the head or shot him. Then why didn't you? Because he's crazy. Drunk crazy. I want to give him one more chance. To kill you? Maybe. But I'm hoping he'll just get so drunk he'll quit. Well, we may have to shoot it out. I'm not saying it won't end that way. But I thought at least you'd have enough sense to understand. Man waiting to get killed is easy to figure. You're tired of living. Oh, well, look, Mr. Kelly, listen to me, will you? Stoop to a trick like that is just plain yellow. He's uh, hiding in Kelly's saloon. I'll get him out of there. But how do I know his his deputies won't gun me in the back? Take a look at my store. There's a dozen men in there willing to back you up. I'll tell you something, Albright. I don't need him. Go fetch my horse. I kill a marshal, I want to get out of town quick. Hey, you Johnny Laws. You go tell Herb to quit hiding. Tell him to come out here and make his fight. The worst thing a marshal can do is to kill a man, no? Sure, you may think he deserves it, but his relatives and friends don't. That's why Billy Brooks and John Allen had to leave Dodge City. They found themselves ringed with enemies. Yeah. And the lowdownest thing a man can do is to make gunplay against drunks. If the drunk dies, why, well, they say you took advantage of them. If you die, they... Quiet. If you die, why, you're considered mighty poor to get killed by a drunk. Yeah. Please, yelling for you to come make your fight. Now, yeah, where? Outside Albright's store. I think there's about a dozen cow hands inside. I believe they got the guns with them. All right. Well, shouldn't me and the boys take the guns away from those cow hands first? No, you just stay where I told you. I'll be out there directly. Okay. Why don't you get just too drunk and fall over? He's had his chance. 
Yeah, I guess so. Kill him. Afraid I'm gonna have to. Mr. Allison, I don't want you to depend on my habit of only wounding a man. You ain't scaring me. Well, go ahead, draw. Draw. It's your move. What are you scared of? You offered me a thousand dollars to gun him. You promised plenty of men to back me up. Well, there's Earp and there's his deputies. You want me to take them on all by myself? Watch all right, Smith. You couldn't tame a town like Dodge City, Kansas in 1876 by preaching the golden rule alone. If Dodge was to be civilized, the only argument was a fast gun or hard fists. Marshal Wyatt Earp knew this from bloody experience. And Marshal Earp should have known that his enemies were still out to get him by assassination or by so discrediting him that he would have to quit. Dear Margaret, it's happened. I have fallen in love. His name is Wyatt Earp, and he's the marshal here in Dodge City. Dodge City of all places. But that's why I know it's real. Dodge is very real. There's nothing but dust in the hot Kansas sun and... Fabian. Uh, uh, no, ma'am, I'm uh, not hurt at all, thanks. But he is. Did you shoot him? Oh, no, ma'am. I just uh, hit Mr. Driscoll over the head uh, a bit. Oh, but he's bleeding. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, would you take Mr. Driscoll to jail, please? But Wyatt, shouldn't he have a doctor? Uh, and send for Doc McCarty. I'm sorry, Mr. Herb. Forget it. Uh, Miss Fabian, you you don't belong here. No, but I was afraid that. <laughs> now, the judge isn't going to like this. You uh, made yourself kind of prominent. I embarrassed you. I'm sorry. Well, it isn't that. It's just that you shouldn't rush out when you hear gunfire. You might get yourself hurt. Would that bother you? Yes, ma'am. It sure would. 
to say nothing about how your father would feel. Don't tell me you're afraid of my father. Or of public opinion. Look, Miss Sally, this is Dodge City. Like I've been trying to tell you for a week, it's a rough town. Now, Mr. Driscoll was drunk, carrying guns in the street. They were loaded with real bullets. All right. Once more, I'm sorry. Will you promise me not to rush out of the hotel when you hear gunfire? All right. Why don't you come in and talk to me? Well, I'd like nothing better, but I can't right now. Why not? Well, you see, Mr. Driscoll's a friend of Mr. Rakel, and they were drinking together, and I gotta go find Mr. Rakel before he cuts loose. I didn't dream life in a little western town could be so simple-minded. Well, you get your father to tell you how simple-minded drunks and gunslingers can be. No, you explain it to me. In half an hour? I'll be back in 30 minutes. I'll be waiting then. Where's Mr. Rick? Over the Long Branch Saloon, picking a fight with the dealer. Right, let's go. You and the teachers at Miss Finchley's won't believe me, but I've just returned from a street fight. My dear Wyatt had to hit a drunken man on the head with a pistol. He is still Miss Sallying me, but this time he called me Miss Fabian, so I mustn't... Mr. Rakel. You can't arrest me, Herb. This town belongs to the Rakel and the Driscoll outfit. Not anymore. Why, Mr. Rakel? Oh, well, my old friend Judge Fabian. Judge, tell his young hoodlum who... Lock him up. Oh, one moment, Herb. I'm well acquainted with Mr. Rakel. I'm sorry, I... Judge, but he pulled a gun on this man. Oh, no, Mr. Rakel... I said lock him up. I'm sure the judge doesn't want to argue this case in the street. Anything I can do to help, Judge? Yes, Mr. Albright. Try to talk some sense into that young hothead. I'll take care of it right away, Your Honor. Why, Papa? You look angry. Oh, it's that young Marshall fellow, Herb. He had the cheek to arrest Bob Rakel. Who's Mr. Rakel? Why, he and Toby Driscoll have the two largest cattle spreads anywhere. Both fine men. Fine men. And they're both in jail. What? Well, Wyatt arrested Mr. Driscoll about ten minutes ago. He was drunk and shooting guns in the street. Oh, no. Toby and Bob do a million dollars worth of business in a year. Did I hear you call that fellow Wyatt? Yes. Since when are you on first name terms with Mr. Earp? I've been seeing him, Papa. Every chance I can get. You and Earp? I'm in love with him. I intend to marry Wyatt if he'll have me. If he'll... <sighs> I think we'd best talk about this later. Let's talk about it right now. Well, I've, um, I've got to go to the jail. Papa. Wyatt hasn't asked me, so don't blame him. Or at least, well, I do have some pride. I've always been patient with you. Same as you, I reckon. But you'll never make this stick, Wyatt. Look, you were drinking and shooting guns in the street, and that'll stick. Oh, no, you don't, Herb. Turn them both loose. That's an order. From who? From Judge Fabian. He hasn't heard the evidence yet. Now, you wait a minute. You get in there, too. Listen to you in court. By that time, you won't be in any shape to listen. Well, if you want to bring your men in, try it. Albright tried it. 
He offered Clay Allison a thousand dollars to gun me. You know the trouble with you big pistols is you turn into pop guns every time a fight's off it. Well, you'll have to stay here and watch him. But you better get some cotton to plug your ears. Judge, what's on your mind? Well, I started to the jail to talk to Earl, but for personal reasons, I decided not to. No use talking to him. With George Hoover away, you're acting mayor. Yep. Well, can't you persuade Earl to release Bob and Toby? No, sir. He threw Pete Albright in the same cell. Albright, eh? It won't do, Mr. Kelly. You realize that, don't you? Well, Earl has to release those men. If he doesn't, he'll have both the Rachel and the Driscoll outfits treeing the town. Doesn't the young fool have any respect for his own life? None at all. He'll never make old bones. And that's satisfactory to you, huh? Listen, I ain't had a moment's peace since Earp got here. He's near got me killed four times. The finest funeral I'd pay for him. You sound sincere. I am that, on oath. Then why not discharge the man? Isn't that the simplest way out? No, sir. Huh? He's like my own conscience, Judge. Bedeviling me day and night. Man can't discharge his own conscience. You rate Mr. Earp rather high. The bravest and the best, sir. I hate him and I envy him. You gonna back him in this play? I've no choice. And neither of you, Judge. Why, Lord save us all, the man's right. My daughter seems to agree with you. Yes, and you talk to Wyatt about that. It's a father's duty. Well, uh, a young man with the character you give And he'll die young. So he's no business leaving your Miss Sally a widow. I agree with you. And I will talk to him. Oh, good for you, Judge. You Rako's men? I'm Toby Driscoll's foreman. Oh, yeah, you're a big ranch, aren't you? Wyatt Earp threw both Driscoll and Rakel in jail. Room both in jail for what? Getting a little drunk. Us Driscoll's aim to go after Earp. How about you? Well, I don't know. He's, he's pretty fast on the draw. Gunning's too good for him. We got other plans. Tell you about it on the way to Dodge. All right. Come on, boys. Let's ride. One second, sir. Wyatt, Judge Fabian to see you. No, thank you, Helm. Sit down, sir. Thank you. I uh, came to see you on a personal matter. Uh, look, sir, if it's about Driscoll and the... No, 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 no. I will find them in court tomorrow morning. Well, thank you, sir. You see, it's sort of a test case. We can't afford to treat the cattle owners any different than the hired hands. You see, quite so. My daughter tells me that she's been seeing you uh, socially. Yes, sir. Mr. Earp, you're in a dangerous profession. Yes, sir. I don't think Sally understands just how dangerous it is. Well, I should try to tell her. You in love with Sally? Well, sir, I hope not. But I, I'm afraid I am. Why do you say you hope not? Well, sir, for the same reason you came here. We both know what kind of a life a peace officer lives, what can happen to him. You see, Sally's from Boston, and sometimes I get the feeling that, well, that she thinks Dodge City is just a great big Wild West show. <laughs> I'm certain of that. I don't think she realizes just how violent and brutal life on the frontier can be. Well, sir, that's why I haven't... Uh, Asked her to marry you? Yes, sir. Well, I hope you'll give yourself time to do some more thinking about it. I can't pretend that Sally would follow my wishes. She's like her mother, who insisted that we move west after the war. This country demanded more of my wife than her health could stand. 
I blame myself. That's why I... Well, thank you for hearing me out. Yes, sir. Good day, Marshal. Dreadful, you can't tell me. What did my father say to you? Just what every father would say. He was really very nice about it. What he had to say made sense. Wyatt, my father's prejudice against this country for women, on account of my mother. I know. He doesn't want you to marry a man in my line of work. So that's it. He's afraid I couldn't face up against the daily fear of your being hurt. I'm a coward. You think about it. I don't want to think about it. Wyatt, you are in love with me. Yes, I am. But it can't come true. Not right now. Why not? Because of what you are, Sally, and what I am, and what life in Dodge is like. You can't just marry... <laughs> Why didn't you shoot back? He was aiming high. He was just trying to warn me. I think I would have shot back. You see, I, I really am quite tough. No, you're not. Wyatt, did I faint? Am I crying? Well, you haven't seen a man get hit with a 45 slug yet. I saw you hit Mr. Driscoll with a gun. Well, you do have courage, Sally. I'm more courage than you. I'd marry you tomorrow. Say yes, Wyatt. Accept the proposal of this bold, bad woman who loves you so. Sally, I love you so much that I... Then it's settled. I'm going to be Mrs. Wyatt Earp. You can't escape now, dear. I don't want to escape. I just want you to be sure that... What? What? You better take Miss Sally right straight back to the hotel. Why? The Driscoll and Rakel outfits are headed for town. Slap his face and wake him up from dreaming. He's the marshal of Dodge City, and if he don't think quick, he's going to be dead. Dead? Well, I hate to be so blunt, but you need to learn the truth. Mr. Kelly is an excitable Irish, Sally. Don't let Mr. Earp blarney you. There's a bunch of mean, killing cowhands coming after him. Very well, then. I'll have my father deputize every man in town. We'll fight them. Not this boy. He'll try to do it all by himself. Oh, now, Wyatt, you're not that foolhardy, are you? Look, I've had men coming after me ever since I started as a marshal. Nine times out of ten, it was a false alarm, and the other times... Well, I'm still living. Now, you go on back to your place and soak your head in a bucket of water. I'll talk to you later. Mr. Kelly has a large imagination. Whatever my faults, I ain't a widow maker. Widow maker? Is that supposed to frighten me? Oh, no, it's uh, just bad-tempered Kelly talk. I wonder if my father couldn't have planned this whole thing. It's quite possible. No. Then if it is true about the cowhands, what are you going to do? Well, I tell you, I'm going to take you back to your hotel and, and I'm going to go have a nice long talk with Mr. Kelly. But the cowhands, he said they were going to... Oh. I'd have punched you one. I've let all your remarks about marriage pass, but what you pulled tonight was just about the limit. Well, save your strength. You're going to need it in the morning. For what? You ever hear of Big Ranch, the foreman for Toby Driscoll? No, I can't say as I have. Is he faster than Clay Allison? He don't fight with guns. He fights with his fists. Oh, well, that'll be a nice change. Well, you won't think so. He's bigger than you are, and he's whipped every top fighter from here to San Antonio. You're trying to tell me that all they're going to do is try and get me into a fist fight with Ranch? Driscoll and Rachel ain't stupid. They know Judge Fabian would call in the soldiers and hang any man who tried to gun you. All right, so there's much to do about nothing. Nothing, is it? 
Rance will beat you to a bloody pulp. You'll live a cripple the rest of your days, if you don't die. Maybe. Now, what was the idea of trying to scare Miss Sally? Ah, I asked you a question. And you'll get no answer from me. If you don't know what's wrong with you marrying a girl like her, I'd never get it through your thick head. That would make a remark, huh? Look, I got some fine brass knuckles around here. You better try them on for size. I don't need your brass knuckles or anything else. So you think I'll leave Miss Sally a widow, huh? It ain't likely. When Big Rance gets through with you, there couldn't even be a marriage. Now, quit being a fool and put these in your pocket. No, oh, thanks. Well, I've seen Big Rance fight. At least let me show you some of his dirty tricks. I'm not interested, Mr. Kelly. But in regards to Miss Sally, if I ever hear this... Get out of my place! I won't sleep awake tonight. I'll see Big Rance's fist breaking your jaw and cracking your ribs. He wears Mexican spurs on his boots, and I can see him now. Mr. Dra Kelly, will you kindly shut up? I found myself a brave girl. You know, you're the one who ought to be wearing skirts. Sometimes I think you're my friend, other times I think you're my enemy. You do me a favor tomorrow morning and be my friend, huh? What's the deal? Just don't try and stop the fight. Promise? <laughs> I hope you'll stand up for me at my wedding. You're dreaming, Wyatt. <laughs> Judge find the seats a hundred dollars. Three hundred. Count it. That's all right, Mr. Driscoll. I trust you when you're sober. Thanks. One other piece of business, Earp. A lot of our boys are waiting outside. They're not packing guns. Yeah, I noticed that through the window. My foreman, Mr. Rance, would like to have a talk with you. That is, if you'll take off your guns and keep your deputies from interrupting the conversation. Well, I tell you, Mr. Driscoll, I've already issued the necessary orders. I just hope you gentlemen have picked out a nice ringside section. We're going to enjoy every second you last. Yeah. Is that what you wanted? Yeah. Ranch won't quit. some water on him. You can take more of a beating than this. No, Wyatt, please. You've whipped him. Stay Jack, back, out. Sally. Keep her back. He's had all he can take. All right. Anybody else want some? Yeah, I do. The Driscolls can't whoop you. Us Rakels can. No, Wyatt, don't fight anymore. She's right. You're tired. Look, I either run this town or I don't. <laughs> Come on, 
get up! Should have gone back to the hotel. You didn't have to fight that other man. It was brutal. I'm in a brutal business. I told you that. Now you know. Yes. Now I know. It's over, but you better put these on. Do you feel better about it after she thinks about it? No. No, she won't. She didn't even have to slap my face. I've quit dreaming, Mr. Kelly. của mình và đừng quên ấn like video subscribe kênh để mình có thể ra được nhiều video khác nữa nhé xin chào và hẹn gặp lại mọi người ở những video sau các bạn mà không like không xem cho mình là mình sau mình không ra video nữa